Hello friends, is an adult and still absolutely terrified of turning off the light and walking up my basement stairs here, bringing you another Dota 2 video. And a couple of weeks back, over at the Dota Alchemy podcast, somebody asked us a really interesting question. They asked, what are the telltale signs that somebody is bad at their role in Dota 2? The reason that I find this particular question so interesting is because it kind of sheds a bit of light on something that is extremely common in Dota. And that thing is, people thinking that they can play every role in Dota when really they can probably play one or two at best. So in this video, we're going to be covering the biggest telltale sign that somebody isn't good at their particular role. I do quickly want to make a disclaimer at the start of this video. This video is not meant to be something that brings people down for being bad at their role. In fact, I hope that it does quite the opposite. From my experience, seeing people overcome plateaus in coaching, it's my opinion that the absolute first step in the process of improving is realizing that there's much more to learn than you currently know. First, let's start with carry. What identifies an experienced carry versus an inexperienced carry? Experienced carries will cut this tree right here on Dire and this tree right here on Radiant. Why are these particular trees important? Because in order to pull the hard camp not directly into the enemy offlaner, you need to cut these trees. Why is pulling important? Because the lane is impossible to play if it's not in front of your tower. I guarantee you, check out your replays where you fed in the laning stage, it is usually right in front of the enemy tower. So. Any experienced carry player is used to good supports, essentially begging them to cut these trees pre-game. Why don't the supports do it themselves? Because supports don't start with this item right here, which, of course, lets you cut trees free of charge. What do supports start with? Jack shit. Barely enough tangos to make ends meet, usually. So, if you're a carry player that simultaneously wants your support to pull the lane back, but also not leave you alone to go tango that tree that you neglected to cut, then things are going to go pretty poorly for you. In other words, just cut that damn tree for your support. Next, let's talk about the mid lane. If you're a mid laner and you expect your support to buy and place wards for you, then you probably aren't as good at mid as you think. Why? Because the mid lane is all about individual skill, matchup knowledge, and mechanics. So, it's expected that as a good mid laner, you know exactly how to play versus certain heroes, including where to place wards so that you can enable yourself to have a good game. Before wards were free, people had a great excuse to essentially be lazy, and to lose to matchups, and to die to ganks that they shouldn't. All because they could just blame supports for not warding or dewarding. In this patch, that's no longer acceptable because wards are free and dewards even earn you gold. So, warding and dewarding has actually become a pretty convenient filter to tell who's a good mid laner and who's a lazy one. Next, let's talk about the offlane. If you're an offlaner and you're farming here in the jungle, then you probably aren't as good at the offlane as you think. Why? Because as an offlaner, your job is absolutely not to take safe farm. Your job is to be manly and feed relentlessly if that's what it takes to create space for your team. The problem is, the triangle is the safest farm on the map to take, but it also happens to be the closest jungle to the offlane, so a lot of offlaners will run over there to farm by default. But where you should really be farming is behind the enemy tier 1 tower, pressuring the tower and the carry and farming their jungle, leaving the triangle for your carry to farm. If you're an offlaner and you farm the triangle, you are basically playing carry from the offlane, which obviously isn't very good. The one exception to this rule is when you play behind their tower and then the entire enemy team runs at you, and that's when you can go farm your triangle and it's okay because you're making the farm in your safe lane safe by drawing the enemy's attention away and towards you. But all of this starts with cutting the wave and farming their jungle. Next, let's talk about 4 position. If you're a 4 position and the creep equilibrium is pushed into your tower, and your response to that is to stand there, helping your core get last hits, then chances are you might not be as good at the 4 position as you think you are. The general argument that position 4s make when they're doing this is, hey, I need experience too, right? Yes, absolutely, I totally agree, this is 100% correct, but standing in the trees and soaking experience when the wave is here 
actually gets you less experience total. Why? Because when the wave is here, then most of the time your core is perfectly capable of getting last hit safely, and so there's no reason to have two people sitting there splitting the XP 50-50. It might be different if you got more XP when there were multiple heroes there, but that's not how it is. It's precisely in this time where playing position 4 actually gets interesting. When the wave is here, that means you're free to leave. You can pick up runes, you can stack camps, you can stop the enemy support from pulling, you can gank mid, you can gank the safe lane. Really, the list goes on. This is where your own personal style of Dota can shine. Do you like killing people? Then go roam when the wave is in your tower. Do you like getting your cores really fat and farmed? Then make huge stacks for them when the wave is in your tower. And for this reason, if a four roll is sitting in trees and soaking XP when the wave is pushed in, then they aren't really playing four. They're just playing some other offlane role, but without getting last hits. Finally, we get to the five position, aka the hard support role. I'm gonna be honest here. I struggled to pick one single red flag for bad position fives because there are so many red flags for bad position fives in pubs and there are so many bad position fives in pubs. From my experience, this is the least well-played role in all of Dota. Most position fives that are bad don't ward, they pick line and they rush Aghanim Scepter, they feed the lane, they complain that their cores suck while they're not doing any supporting, the list goes on. But the number one red flag that shows that somebody doesn't actually know how to play position five is that they don't ever pull the lane, and instead they sit in the trees soaking experience and usually feeding as a result. The reason this is the biggest red flag is similar to the problem we talked about with the 4 position. The foundation of laning in the safe lane is stacking and pulling. The reason for this, if they pull and you don't, you lose the lane, regardless of how many kills you get or how sick you are at last hitting, because the math works out that denying entire creep waves to jungle camps is, quite frankly, pretty broken. So, essentially, if you never pull, you're leaving it up to whether or not the enemy team is pulling to decide if you win or lose every single lane you play. And considering this role is the most early game centric role in Dota, and the early game is all laning, chances are, if somebody says they can play position 5, and they're having zero impact in every laning stage because they're not doing the foundation of the laning stage, which is pulling, they probably can't play position 5. That's it for this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm because uh, Diet Pepsi powder is actually quite expensive, especially when you're eating uh, two to three kilograms of it per day to sustain your addiction. So if you could support me in that, I would uh, greatly appreciate it. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in another Pepsi.